towards the cool people, making changes, making cool things happen, from design and music to entrepreneurialism. I mean, whatever you want, we got it. So get comfortable because we have some wicked guests coming through tonight. Peter Wilkins, one of the owners of the Newfoundland Distillery, a fantastic spirits company who is experiencing major success. And he has a brand new book. You're going to want to check it out. And of course, Emily King and Gina Keeping, they want you to shift. They did it before. They're about to do it again. So stay tuned. This is Out of the Fog. And we'll be right back after this break. Welcome back, everybody. This is Out of the Fog, and I'm super excited to be hanging out with the one and only, the man with all the spirits, Peter. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Have you been on the show before? I don't think so. Well, geez. I thank you to remember if you were sitting across from me. Yeah, well, I have definitely haven't been on the show with you before. I think, to be honest, a long time ago, about 20 years ago, when it was filmed um, sort of down by yeah, the... Yeah, exactly um, down the way. ...the Kiri Vidi. And it is 20 years old, the yeah. show. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. Exactly. Now, I've been lucky enough to hang out on this stage for four, and I've met some great people, and I'm about to meet another one. Well, <laughs> I don't know, but thank you for saying that. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Let's jump right on in. First of all, I want to talk about your love of spirits and what led you into the entrepreneurial journey to start what has become one of the island's most popular brands. And I, I mean, first of all, I'm going to ask you, are you proud of the impact that your business has made? Well, it's very kind of you to say that. Um, we're rather amazed by it, because we were just sort of trying to make spirits that we wanted to drink <laughs> um, and enjoy. So, yeah, we're absolutely thrilled and delighted that um, a lot of people within the province have, sort of, have been enjoying them too. Oh, my God, they're loving it. And there's so many things, as a graphic designer, um, everything from the brand to the bottles, I mean, everything down the line is just so well done. It takes a village, does it not? It does, because we've been immensely lucky with the help and support we've had mm. from everybody. Because I, before this, was an artist, and I thought I could come up with a label. <laughs> so I came up with a label, and everybody looked at it and said, Peter, have you thought of hiring professionals? <laughs> and I thought that wasn't very friendly, no, and they could not. have been a bit nicer yeah, about it. Been, yeah. So we had a chat with John at Perfect Day, and they, he just effortlessly did it and made it look so uh, easy and perfect. He is a virtuoso. Yeah. So, so it was all... But, you know, it was wonderful. So we're very lucky to have yeah, people like that around. And I mean, what led you to your love of starting this business? Because, you know, it's one thing to drink it. Yep. It's another thing you can do it better. It's another to do it better. You know? Well, I don't know. I have a bit of history in that a while ago, I did travel the world with a friend in the UK for British television, um, investigating how other cult cultures approach alcohol. So I was technically a prof professional drinker for a year. That's hilarious. What a uh, unique opportunity. Yeah, so I obviously investigated alcohol very seriously <laughs> then and learned a lot. And when Bill, um, who's the sort of chief distiller and does all the hard work, came to me in 2016 and said, I want to make whiskey, are you interested? I, of course, said yes, but yeah. can you make gin? And he went, yeah. And he went off and made some gin and then we looked about just setting up a distillery, and we were incredibly lucky because everybody was really helpful and everything just seemed to fall into place. Wow. And we're still scratching our heads going, really? Have we done this? How, how did that happen? Was it that long ago? Have we done that much? And well, I'm very interested to meet you for 18 reasons, but one of them being um, the mixed drinks. In a I can. I mean, how did, like, it's unreal, the success. You must be blown away. We, yeah, we totally misjudged that um, because we thought we made millions of cans because you've got to order an enormous <laughs> amount of cans yeah. and make a lot of booze to sort of fit in all the cans. Yeah. And our first batches, we thought, OK, well, that's going to last us for a year. And, <laughs> you know, we should have thought a bit bigger. And then so when the summer came and we got them out, they just went, shoom, oh right my out. God. And I was like, oh. Everywhere I turned all summer was, long. Yeah. And I had maybe one or two. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, maybe a couple. Yeah, and that's great. But because we wanted to use... Increase like real fresh lemon juice mm -hmm. rather than 
flavoured sort of lemon alternatives. Right. Um, and we had to, you know, get it properly imported, zipped up. It made it all a lot more complicated, and then there would be too much pulp in the mixes. And so we had, you know, a one or two trials and tribulations. But we think we've got there. We think and hope we've got lots of stock for Christmas oh, for everybody. Of course. Um, and we've worked very hard at it. And, you know, we think we've... I mean, there are a lot of cans. Wow. So... I'll tell you what, um, you know, from starting the distillery to the brands that you've developed, the new vessels by which they come out, all of these thin cans, you know, they're all the craze. And then all of a sudden he wakes up and he says, I'm going to write a book now. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, you got to have the ambition and the drive to make that happen. I can't imagine getting through a short story for me or a poem or a blog is one thing. Long form. To... Yes, please. Long form is quite an endeavor. How long did it take you from start to finish? Oh, I don't know. A couple of days? Oh, um, yeah. No. The <laughs> weekend. <entry. laughs> it took a very long time because we were developing the cocktails in the bar in the tasting room mm -hmm. in Clark's Beach. And so when we came up with the idea of the cocktail book, it was just like, well, we're making all these already. And then it was quite a nice afternoon thing. If I was lagging on an afternoon, I'd go, oh, I've got some serious work to do. I'm going to just perfect one of these cocktails and make sure we've got it right <laughs> for the cocktail book. And then I emailed Claire at Breakwater Books. Um, Who we love. Yeah, uh, you know, about the idea. And she said, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, we'd love to help. So I went, oh, brilliant. And then they've just looked after the whole project and made it immensely easy and wonderful. And, wow. And said, yes, Peter, you've got to have it all done by this date. So I've gone, fine. And that's easy. I've got a date. And then you go, oh, I'll do that closer to the time, and then it's like, oh, that's next week. So then you write quite a lot. Of course. How helpful have Breakwater Books been to your journey? You mentioned earlier, but let's dig deeper. Well, immensely, they've sort of, they've put the whole thing together and been incredibly professional. So there's been an editor, there was a sort of editorial panel, and then an editor assigned to me, then a designer, and, you know, and then they've got the whole team who've just made it a complete delight. Wow. So I feel, yeah, very lucky to um, have been looked after so well by them. Well, I mean, a multi-generational family business, and they are, you know, one of the best companies of their kind in Atlantic Canada and yeah, across the country. Exactly, and they, they, they were seriously. here, yeah. And we really want to, or I really want to make sure that, you know, it was a local sort of publication, mm -hmm. and, you know, it was just first choice. So they were very lucky, and also Lisa Moore, who very kindly wrote an introduction, you know, and she knows them all, so it was all very easy to say, Lisa, that, you know, it's with Breakwater. She went, oh, yes, I'd love to do that. That's so great. You know, which is wonderful. Now, you know, some friends of mine who write books and they, I say, you know, are you, what's your next one? And they laugh at me. Have you thought about a follow-up? Have you thought about anything beyond this <laughs> next amazing Next year's, piece? perhaps, with a couple more bars and restaurants. Yeah, exactly, the latest edition. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> to keep evolving a chapter every yeah, year, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I haven't, really. Um, no, not Too at all. Soon. Yeah, I delighted with that, and certainly we could do, you know, if people like it and enjoy it, you know, and we have to do more, that'd be wonderful. But one of my favourite parts about the book is we've got all bars and restaurants and breweries from across the province submitting their own sort of top um, cocktails. No so way. I think, you know, ours are great, but what's really good fun is seeing from, from everywhere, you know, from downtown yeah. and all around St John's to sort of Carbonair, to all the way to um, everywhere, We've even and down to select? Buren, we've gone up to Lab City, and down out of to here. Corner Brook. So, you know, it's just a f really eclectic mix. Yeah, Port Rexton, Bonna Vista, Upper Amherst Cove, Gander, I mean, you're everywhere. Yeah, yeah you're reading from this. I no, I'm just saying, I'm just making it up. <laughs> no, yeah, but I am reading from the list. Um, and how did you go about selecting the places who would contribute and the people who would contribute but, these drinks? Um, <laughs> it should have been a bit fairer, and I should have written to everybody. <laughs> But yeah. it was really the people I know or knew in the town, some people that, you know, we'd had sort of had some kind of relationship with. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't quite as sort of equal fair. I didn't put a call out to everybody submit. I just wrote to the people I knew I could get in touch with yeah. to see if they'd be interested. Such is life. And um, rather wonderfully, I think they almost all said yes. Well, we have an amazing hospitality industry here, and well, we so do. many Epicureans from drink and food alike. I mean, they live it, they love it, and it's our number one export, last time I checked, was our culture uh, beyond resource. And so mm -hmm. it's very nice that you're doing something like this to sort of give more 
of a spotlight to them, not just your own brand, even though, I mean, there's more than enough to love. I'm sure you've gotten a lot of great feedback, hey? Yeah, I think people have been, yeah, incredibly kind and supportive so far. I mean, it's only just that, so I haven't had any calling up saying, oh, you got the proportion of that a bit wrong. <laughs> but I do sort of preface it and they're saying, everybody's got their own taste. So if you don't like how we've suggested you have it, try it your way. And that's right. That's better. Oh, yeah, Write it sure. down. Yeah, because that'd be the best way to have it. I'm very interested in the backstory about you traveling around, um, trying drinks all over. I mean, how does an opportunity like that fall into your lap? I have a friend in the UK who I sort of grew up with, I was known for a very, very long time, who became sort of very mildly famous um, as a bit of a sort of very minor TV personality. Okay. Um, and they were doing a series where they wanted these very minorly famous people to go with a friend on a sort of trip that they really wanted to do. So I went with Dom to sort of Lebanon and Syria, this was a long time ago, and the producers, or not the producers, the channel loved what we, you know, how we got on or whatever. And said, <laughs> Let's, um, you know, we'll give you to a show. What can you do? And they spent a long time trying to come up with clever ones. And Don was trying to be really clever and nothing worked. And it, in the end, the sort of producer said, what do you and Pete do the whole time? He goes, oh, we just sit down and drink and chat. <laughs> oh, we'll send you around the world <laughs> looking at booze. And they went, perfect. And it was sort of that easy. If you're looking for another minor TV personality to join you in season two, like I might know somebody, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen, I want to really get in some of these photos. I'm trying to tip the cap here now to everyone who helped make this book possible. And these photos are unreal. Thank you. Well, Dave has um, rather brilliantly took all the really, really great photos. Wow. It's quite obvious. You can see Dave's and then you can see some of mine, which were the sort of backup photos. It's amazing. Listen, in our final moment of hang here, where can folks get their hands on your brand new amazing book? Um, a lot of stores downtown. I know there's Home, Bees Knees, and quite a few others. I think it yeah. um, should be in Chapters, Coles in the Mall, Breakwater Books, and at um, yeah, the shop, our shop in Clark's Beach, and um, all good bookstores. Of course, where fine quality books are sold. Uh, will you come back again and see us sometime? Delighted to. Will you bring some drinks? If I can, I'd be. Brilliant. Okay. What we do behind the building in the alley has is no one's business. Okay, I'll keep it quiet. Guys, this is a brand new book, The Man Peter Wilkins, Newfoundland Distillery. Check them out. Their products are available everywhere. And now this fine book as well. This is Out of the Fog. And we'll be right back after this break. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Welcome back, everybody. It is Out of the Fog, and if it looks like I'm laughing ear to ear, it's because I am, because I'm sitting next to two of the queens Aww. here now next to me. Gina, Emily, how are you? Wonderful. Yeah? We just love being with you, so this is great. Well, I like the feeling. I mean, it's, it's, My cheeks are already. I know, we just started. <laughs> Seriously. Good problems to have. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Always listen, a good time. And in the world of entrepreneurial times, we can use all the laughs we can get. Oh my God, yes. yes. It's an adventure, to be sure. Mm -hmm. Is it not? It really is. Oh my God. When you think back on where you both started, respective of um, setting out to help people using mm. your skills, could you have imagined that you would be at this point in your career looking back and seeing so many people who you've helped so much? Gina. Oh, well, it's actually pretty ironic because the day that we're recording this, I had a memory come up today of my very first event that I attended six years ago that changed the, the whole, you know, area of my life wow. where I was going what I was doing and I was saying to Emily today when we were talking like sometimes when you look back and you see how far you've come and mm. you know what you've been through and who you've helped and who've helped me like it's mm. just this whole whew, moment of like yeah like this this is what it's all about mm. so you know today's a little bit of a you know, heart day for me. Yeah. I'm kind of looking back, so don't yeah. get her crying, honey. <laughs> Listen, I, I won't stop. Go to take me up. Um, you know, my wheeler out, my guys. Heart. And it's me and you. you know? <laughs> my work here is done. Um, but yeah, well, I love to hear that. It's been amazing. Yeah, 
And do you echo that? Like, how do you feel in the same context? Yeah, like, as you're saying that, it's funny because we both started the exact same time with our mm -hmm. businesses and doing the same thing. Well, not same, same, but yeah. pretty much. And I, I know, I, I think I can speak for both of us, mm -hmm. is we, we had the transformation ourselves in mm -hmm. our lives, coming from hard yeah. places. And I know for me, it just came from like, if, if my life feels so good after feeling so crappy, mm. <laughs> like I have to share this with the world. Yeah. And Gina, like, same, same. thing. Yeah. Like, it's just like, let's get this out to as many people as we can mm -hmm. because you don't need to be stuck. Exactly. Wow. Yeah, and I think sometimes when you're in those situations, it's so hard to even believe that something can help you, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I'm sure everybody watching has had a time where they're like, I, I can't see the light, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and we were both there, and yeah. I think both of us early on, we made the decision that we weren't gonna let that be our circumstance, and the hardships were gonna be the light for other people. Wow. Yeah. It's like the saying, pain is inevitable, but mm. suffering is optional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we still, to this day, obviously, we're gonna come against pain, Sure. Oh, yeah. And done. but we use the tools that we've learned over the years yeah. to help alleviate that suffering and move through it gracefully versus feeling like we're stuck there mm -hmm. and that's yeah. our that's our ending. Mm -hmm. you know? And changing the dialogue around what that means because I remember when I started sharing my story, mm -hmm. a lot of people put shame on me. I was like, Oh, you can't let people see the dark mm -hmm. side. So I think we both had this collective, you know, per passion to, to change the narrative of what it means to to do this work you know, for yourself mm -hmm. and for the people you love. Well, and, let, and let's like, you know, I want to zoom out for the moment and yeah. zoom right back in. Yeah. I would like for you both to say what it is that your day-to-day -day vocation is and, mm. and, and what you do, and yeah. then we'll talk about how you come together and what that is. Yeah. So I'll ask you yeah. first. Sure, so I actually started off um, doing life coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, I was an empowerment coach, so I got trained under Tony Robbins, Amazing. and you know he changed my life, and the impact he had on me, I was like, I wanna have that impact on people. Um, I know last time we talked a lot about him. Um, so then it started that way, mm -hmm. and then before the pandemic, I had already had a full-fledged business online. Right. Um, I was still teaching at that time and was helping other teachers go online. And organically, I kind of went into business coaching where people were coming to me and say, how do you set up online? How do you do this? So then organically, I got in the business world and you know helping people through mm -hmm. mindset. Um, and then also growing their businesses together. So that's Cole's nose version for sure. Love it. <laughs> mm. And mine is very similar. So I too started as a life coach. And then I quickly learned I love chatting about money with mm. women in particular. Mm. Yeah. Money queen. Money queen. Money yeah. queen. <laughs> it's, it's something I love to chat about because I feel that so many women in particular feel disempowered around it. Mm. And so I kind of niche down into money mindset. Uh, and a business mentor. My, I have an un, or not un, a master's in business. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So I kind of combined the two, and that's what I've been doing since 2015. Wow. And yeah. so both two girls out there doing it for other women, doing it for themselves, and then all of a sudden you meet when and where. What was that all about? <laughs> Did we meet in 2016? Was it? I think we met early on. Yeah. Because I was in the MLM world, and you did a talk on money mindset. Yes. For, I was a beach buddy coach. That's how I got yeah. into this world. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then I was like, oh, there's you know bigger things out there. And so that's where we kind of. Yeah. So we met yeah. there. So we knew of each other, and we had gone for coffee and stuff, yep. and you know liked each other's stuff. Yeah. And and uh, it was really cool. This this past year, we got really really close and decided yeah. to collaborate and start a business together. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know. Shift as a, a word speaks so much to evolution and mm -hmm. changing your mindset and all the things that get us out of feeling stuck. Yeah. What drew you to that name? And I want to know what you set out to do as your mutual goal. Right. So I think collectively we had a vision of how we wanted to help people. And it was post -pan pandemic. Right. So people mm. were struggling. Um, and on a magnitude bigger than before. It almost put everybody on the same playing field, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So people were actually vocalizing and we, were, we both wanted to do something and we had this vision and the pieces that came together and how it happened, like, I'm, it was wild. I'm still yeah. in awe yeah. of how it all kind of fell into place. And I'll let you tell the shift story of the name because oh it was God. so funny. <laughs> well, we can't curse. Yeah. But I have this this creative way of doing things where if there's something like a name of a of yeah. a event, it kind of seems like a lot of pressure. 
So I have this thing where you get you put out all the terrible names. What are the worst names out there? <laughs> and so Gina said the the blank show. <laughs> Yeah. Now I'm getting it. And yeah. then we went, well, what at the shift show? And then we said, but almost at the same time, we're like, shift. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, just shift alone. Because that, because, yeah. Well, you know, we didn't want to do something that we feel like has been there, done that, like, sure. empower event or, like, you know, like something yeah. like, we're like, mm -hmm. something that's, like, punchy. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're like, that's what it's about. It's about coming and oh, shifting. Yes. Like, shifting boom. your mindset, shifting your reality, shifting in your goals, shifting yeah. everything. Yeah. And that shift could be individual to whoever comes like yeah. it's not for a specific genre or for you know a specific yeah. set of you know people right. it's you come we take you where you are yeah. you get to choose a shift that you make we show you how freaking incredible you are yeah. uh, and you leave with a pep in your step mm -hmm. Boom. right yeah I mean it's, it sounds simple it's yeah. simple but I remember you know I, I said this recently I, I saw Gary Vee speak once. If you don't know Gary Vee, he's hello. incredible. Mm -hmm. And he got up on the stage and he said, I'm going to share all of my information with you. And everyone was like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, but the reality is 95% of you are not going to do anything with it. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is not, is not the problem. Yeah. It's the integration. Mm -hmm. It's how you move forward. And people need that community and support and totally. need to know how to take action. But know how to take action and regulate your emotions as you do it. Yes. Yeah. Right? And it's a skill. I can, you know, it's not in the education system, right? No. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no one teaches you how to, to fly and fall and then find the discipline, the accountability, all of these buzzwords to, and the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To help you get up and move forward. We're yeah. huge on community. Uh, yeah. We love people. We do. <laughs> Just, a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. I didn't yeah. know that about you. And so that is like one of our big things with shift is not just come sit down be quiet we're going to oh, no. talk to you all day we're like no we are getting involved yeah. you are going <sighs> to make friends like we're going to make sure that all of you leave feeling incredible yeah. when you leave here and fun fact is that at our first event in june yeah. uh over 50 percent of the people that came came by themselves yeah. What an interesting stat. Which yeah. was awesome because it we can were be, pumped about that. Yeah. Of course. Because it can be super intimidating to go yes. to something like it's like, oh yeah. God, I don't know anyone. But the way we work is we make sure within that first mm. like 10 minutes, basically, yeah. you are laughing, you're high fiving. Gina yeah. at the at our first event had people doing rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It Whatever was, gets them in the mix, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that's so incredible. And so what was the outcome of that first event? Oh. Well, when we were, yeah. I remember the day after the event, and we went down, and we sat at the table at the alt, and we just started to cry because I'm oh. probably emotional now. The testimonials and what people transformed and how they transformed, mm. it, it was just amazing. And... I think sometimes we forget to give ourselves that gift of self exploration, yes. mm -hmm. you know, and you know, six years ago, I gave that gift to myself. Um, mm -hmm. And if I didn't give myself that gift, I would not be here. Wow. You would not be here. And I think we hold on to these stories of, you know, what you can and can't have, but doing this work, you never know what can change. And to be as corny to say, like, it changed people's lives, but it did. Yeah. yeah. No, I know that firsthand from yeah. attendees who told me, yeah. which is why I was so like, ooh. Because, you know, okay. two powerhouse entrepreneurial um, helping females coming together to create a community of people who are losing their minds and have been ever since. And now, you know, in the new year, very soon, yeah. the next event. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does that look like? Oh, uh, much of the same, but bigger. Um, yeah. You know, we had to do a bigger venue. Mm -hmm. um, people wanted more, not just the day of. So we had to do a VIP event in the evening for more collaboration and networking yeah. oh and God. community. People wanted the party to keep going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, like that. Yeah. They're like, we'll yeah. keep the party I going. Keep that going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so there's a VIP option with like a smaller intimate group. But I mean, at our last event, we had 100 people come out, which was yeah. like overwhelmed us. <laughs> for the first one? For yeah, the first event. right? Yeah. So, our intention for this, we, we we're capping it at 150 people. Okay. Yep. We're two months out, and it's already over a third sold out. That's so. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Already? Yeah. Yep. I bet people want to give the gift of shift, I bet. Yes, you bet. they do. That's and what it they warms our, Like, I had someone reach out, and she's like, I just bought a ticket for my friend. For Christmas, yeah. she's gonna love it, and I was just like, yes, yeah. like 
But it is that, like, That's if you want, idea. if you really care about the person you love, it's the, it's a way to make mm. them feel more like themselves, you know. Mm. And we're really trying to change the conversation about like being selfish and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Like, you mm. owe it to yourself to to give yourself the gift of happiness, confidence. Yeah you know, and get yourself in these rooms. Like, these rooms have changed our lives. Yeah. And we had to go away for all of these events, so we wanted to bring it here yeah. so people can have that same experience, you know? Well, how can folks get involved? Because in our final minute now of this hang, can't believe it flew so quick. Oh my God. Always yeah. the way. We yeah. come back again? Oh my God, yes. yes. Please. Yeah. I want to come down and be like, I'm not allowed in, but I'm standing outside oh, the door. Oh, you can come in. Oh, in. Come in. Men can come. What? Jason yes, Pearson sir. came to our last one. What? <laughs> yes. We yes. love. Of course. Hey, Jason. Jason, what's up? <laughs> uh, okay, listen, I'll tell you what. We have to throw. Tell us where yeah. we can learn more about Absolutely. what's coming. www.theshiftevent.ca. The the and you can go find us on Instagram at The Shift Event. Yes. Yeah. Um, go get I, your ticket. You will not be disappointed. Well, I'll tell you what. I want to be bringing this up in the throws until we wrap for the season because I'm Aww. so excited about what you ladies are doing, Thank the you. impact you're having. Uh, I, I get emotional as well because we need more people who are inviting more people in to the opportunity to shift and to grow. Yeah, and that's what we're here for, aren't we? Absolutely. Yeah. Right? And connection. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We all need it. Like us. Thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Guys, the shift event is coming through, y'all. It's going to be early January. You want to be checking out the shift event. Gina and Emily will help get you there with the community that they're growing, inspiring, and we're so lucky to have them. This is Out of the Fog, and we'll be right back after this break. Guys, what can I say? Another show is in the can and how motivating and inspiring. Thank you so much, Peter, coming through and talking about your journey and spirits guiding you. And we're loving it across the province. And you want to check out that book from Breakwater right to you guys to learn all about the cocktail creations from bartenders and artisans right across the province. And then, of course, we have Emily King and Gina Keeping, two powerhouse female entrepreneurs coming together to make you shift. Check out the shift event. This is Out of the Fog from Rogers Communications 2022, baby. We'll see you next time. <laughs> this program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. I did it. I need it. Here, I gave it. <laughs>